guys welcome back to my channel this is Tiffany and today I am back with another my top five things to stream right now so this can be something whether it's on Hulu or on Amazon Prime video or on Netflix things these are the things that I have been enjoying my disclaimer not necessarily saying that these things are newer some of them are or just recently released but these are just things that I have recently watched these are obviously my opinions so I'm just going to share with you a couple of the things as a part of my job uh, as a dental assistant I talk to patients all day long and it's always fun to get recommendations for new shows or things that I have not seen yet so I just like to watch them so that I can get my own perspective of them and then share them with you guys so I am going to start doing this on a regular basis so whenever I come up with five things that I've really liked if I find something that I really did not like then I will include that as kind of like a bonus I do everything um, with my favorite thing being last and I would love to hear what your guys favorite shows that you're watching right now something that you're streaming and once I get a chance to watch it because I'm starting to have a little bit of a list going with recommendations from coworkers, from patients, from um, friends and family, then I will give you guys a little shout out on here just to give you an update that I watched your show and I liked it or hopefully I liked it and not didn't like it. So let's just get started with my number one. What I'm going to do is read off the quick description to let you know what it is and then I can further give my opinion on what I had saw. So number one is 20, 22 July. So this was on Netflix. The description for the show is, after devastating terror attacks in Norway, a young survivor grieving families and the country rally for justice and healing and it's based on a true story. So this was out this year, has a runtime of two hours and 24 minutes. And this one, I have to say there are parts of it that are very hard to watch. So when I saw the preview for this, when Netflix brought it out, I automatically recognized it because I remember quite some time ago, I watched a documentary on the actual um, person that committed this horrific crime. And I didn't fully understand the reason why of why he did it. I was mainly just kind of going over the whole, um, the whole situation of what happened. But when I watched the actual movie for it, it kind of further explained to the reasoning to why through the characters that were in the movie. I felt like they all did a really good job of portraying each character, but honestly, there were some scenes in the movie that Frank and I watched this together where I was literally yelling at the television, and because I had saw the documentary and knew that it was based on a true story and this actually happened, I think it made it even more difficult to watch. Um, so if you have not seen this yet, like I said, be prepared. There are some scenes in there that are pretty upsetting, um, but I think it's it was a well, well done movie displaying what had happened. Um, just be warned, it's not something you want to watch with children and it can definitely be a little difficult to watch, but I'm glad that I saw it and I'm sad that it happened. Um, but that was definitely one that I wanted to mention for this video. Let's go on to number two. All right, so moving on to number two is Dancing Queen. So again, Dancing Queen, first episode, or it's Get to Work. It's a new season at Beyond Belief Dance, Dance Company and Justin's got big plans for the future. Alyssa goes all out to officiate a wedding. You will see when you watch these that I have a very, um, I watch all kinds of stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. I just like to watch different things. This, I have to say, is extremely entertaining. So, I have my little notebook here. I have some notes. So this came out this year. Um, it's rated TV 14. This, I could watch with Dominic. He is, he just turned 11, so, and he's, he was fine with it. He watched a couple episodes with me. So it's based off the character of the drag queen, Alyssa Edwards. And it's eight, step, eight episodes long. Each episode has like a musical number in it that she performs in it. It's so much fun to watch this. I, after watching this, I definitely want to go to a drag show. I've never been to one before, but it just looks so much fun. And she is 
just beautiful um, when she's in her drag and then he is great he's a dance instructor he has his own company it kind of follows him and shows like what his family a little bit of his family um, struggles that he's had things like that he buys a home in the video or in the in this the episode the one I don't know it's like it's just so much fun so it kind of is just like the drama with the dance moms also so if you like the dance mom type of shows with the kids you know and the drama with that then you would probably definitely enjoy this one as well um, I don't get a chance to watch the dance moms I used to but I don't think we have that channel anymore with our basic cable so I don't follow it anymore um, I don't even know if it's on anymore but I definitely enjoyed this one and I wanted to mention it because it is a lot of fun. It's light, it's not heavy, um, it's just really cool to watch it. So I would definitely recommend checking that out if that's something that you think you might enjoy. Alright, and we are on number three. Number three is of course, if you have not seen the first season of this, you definitely want to watch the first season first and then the second season of Making a Murderer. So of course, if a lot of people are familiar with this, I'm not going into too much detail, but the second season kind of follows the lawyer that agreed to take on Steven's case as Kathy, Kathleen Zellner. This woman is amazing. She is so, I feel like you just are so intrigued by the things that she comes up with and the, and the ways that she investigates the whole crime. Um, it's really interesting to see all of the stuff that goes in behind the scenes. So if you see like the trial and the the lawyers arguing their trial or their, their case, you know, it's just you see that part of it, but you don't see all of that extra stuff that goes into actually getting to that point. And I think that the second season is amazing in the way that they show all of the detail into the different things that they're looking into um, to try to basically prove that Stephen Avery is innocent of this crime. And it also touches on Brendan and the constant struggle going back and forth with Brendan's lawyers trying to get him released from prison. and the struggles with the family members that are you know in the whole midst of the whole thing as well with with um, Brendan and with Steven I will say I everyone has their opinion of if they feel like they did it or if they didn't do it I, I had mentioned it before I think I, I would never get into that I don't know I just I feel like I feel like that's just you agree you think you he, he did it or he didn't do it and that's your opinion um, I honestly don't know. So I felt like I definitely would recommend to watch this one just because like I said it's interesting for the whole case part of it and just following along with all of the evidence and the the whole trial itself and the whole thing that that ends at the back like the very thing that I take with it is I just feel so awful and it's always like that for the family members because these poor people, especially his family and his, and Stephen's family and his parents, I just, it's so sad. Every time I see them or they would show them in the episode, I just feel so bad for them because whether he did it or not, that's, you know, the same thing with her family. It, it, it's like these people forget that that happened to her and I wish that eventually they'll finally find out exactly what happened because it's just sad that no one knows you know or the people that know know what happened and they're not getting they're not getting punished for it or the truth just needs to come out so I definitely I feel like that's a big one and that a lot of people still talk about it and it's interesting but this Kathleen Zellner she's she's really she's awesome so I would watch it again if they had another season just to watch her to see what else she comes up with because she's really she's just so cool so um, yep that is my recommendation for that show my little snippet of what I thought about it and if you have an opinion or if you want to share your you know points to the whole thing just make sure you leave them below because I would love to see what you think about the whole thing if you watch the show or if you're planning on watching the second season if you watch the first season all right we're moving along we're on number four number four oh I wish they come out with another season because this show had me so hooked I got through it so fast and I it takes me forever to get through a show so this one there were two seasons 
I blew through it so fast. I was like, I was, I was in it with this woman and I just, oh my God, let's just talk about it. Marcella. It's actually Marcella. So it looks like Marcella, but it's Marcella. So Marcella, let's see. The description is, after her once happy marriage dissolves, a former detective grapples with jealousy and anger while returning to work to hunt down a serial killer. So this is 2017. Like I said, it has two seasons. Oh my God. So the first season, I have to say, I enjoyed a lot more than the second season, but they were both equally good. Mm, maybe the first is a little bit better. But she is... The detective or the main character is played by Anna Friel. She is so intense and captivating throughout the whole two seasons of this up until the very last minute of the second season when it's the very end. You're like, what the just happened? You're like literally, you're like, what, what was that basically? But I feel like they ended it so that they could make another season and I pray, I'm so hoping that they do because I just, I need to see more. I just need to see more. My mom watched it and she watched it before I did. She felt like she felt like she was too intense. Like she was always just like, she was always just like too, it was like too much. But I loved it. I thought the opposite. I was like, give me more. I love this. So I'm just going to like look at my little notes here. So Marcella is on Netflix. I'm sorry. I did not say that for the last two other things, but these are all things on Netflix. Uh, it's a British drama and she is again like a police detective so in a minute in among the whole thing was basically following her story herself her personal life all of that she's also trying to solve a murder that she was i guess before investigating in the past so you have these different characters that are coming in so it's characters from her personal life and then also from her um, professional life that she's known throughout the years because it's something that she was investigating before so it's cool like it's just really it's really 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 it's really really good if you love stuff that's like crime and just stuff that's like mystery or things that throw you for a little twist you would definitely enjoy this one and I love the characters I love the story. It's just really, really a really good show. And like I said, please, please, please come back with another season because like I said, I just, I oh, and the theme song is sexy. Like the little, the very beginning of it, it's, it's sexy. The sound for it, I love it. Um, yes, Marcella, take a look at it. Just watch it, give it a chance, but definitely get through the first season to the second season and I promise it's such a good if you like that kind of stuff you will enjoy it and let me know what you think if you've already seen it because I would die I would I would love to know I just love it so much now with that said we are on number five so five I always save for last I just threw my notebook because I just want to read the quick little description here um, if you have not seen this yet on your list on Netflix of like the stuff that's showing up or you know the most popular streamed or whatever it is uh, you are missing out hold on let me just pull this up all right being that it's December it's perfect time for Christmas movies and I have to say I think this is my new favorite Christmas movie I love a Christmas story I love the Grinch with Jim Carrey, but I have to say, I love it. The Christmas Chronicles. Have you guys seen this yet? It's such a perfect Christmas movie for the whole family. I don't care how old you are. If you don't enjoy this, you're a non-believer. It's so cute. Okay, so what intrigued me when I first saw this come up was the fact that Kurt Russell plays Santa in this Christmas movie. So I'm like, first of all, every time I think of Kurt Russell, for some reason, I think of the movie Breakdown. Do you guys remember that? I loved it. I don't know why, but that's the first thing that I think about. I know he's in a million other things, but that's what I always think about. So I'm like, Kurt Russell as Santa? This has got to be interesting. I wasn't honestly thinking like it was going to be as good as what it was, but I was wrong. 
After accidentally crashing Santa's sleigh, a brother and sister pull an all-nighter to save Christmas with a savvy or savvy straight-talking Saint Nick. It is so fun. Oh my God. Me and Dominic and Frankie were laughing. There's like the funniest or cutest little musical number and it reminds me of the Blues Brothers, which we absolutely love. It's just so cute and it's so fun and it, I even teared up at the end of it because it's just so perfect. It's like you can't get a perfect, a more perfect Christmas movie for your family around this, around the holidays. Someone needs to market the little elves. Lars, they need to produce multiple of them because if there was a little Lars that I could go buy at Target, I would totally go out and buy him and put him right next to our bed stand just so that I can think about how cute he is because they are the cutest little elves I've ever seen. Um, I don't want to give away too much. You just have to watch it. Let me think. Let me see how long it is. It is one hour and 44 minutes and you don't even realize how long it is because you just, you're too busy enjoying it. The reindeer, Santa, the little kids, they're so cute. The whole story, it's just perfect. It's perfect. So that is it. I was really excited to share the Christmas Chronicles because we watched it a couple weeks ago when it first came out and I've just been waiting to share it because I just loved it so much. I even heard Dominic talking to his friends on the Xbox through his headset saying, hey, did you guys see the Christmas Chronicles yet? Because it's really, really good. So that was really cute to hear. So that is it. If you guys like this, let me know. Um, give me a thumbs up. And if you have not done yet, so please subscribe to my channel because I would love to have you as part of my little YouTube family here that we got going on. So thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I will see you soon. Bye.